everyone, welcome to Tech Talk. My name is Eric Anzalone and this is Pulse One, people, technology, progress. You can't have technology without people. And without technology, progress wouldn't be that simple. So here at the Pulse, we like to check in and take the proverbial pulse of the technology world by talking to the people. And one of those people I have today is Zach Matman from AvPoint. AvPoint is a wonderful, wonderful partner of ours. Uh, AvPoint uh, offers data management solutions, um, uh, bolstering the efficiency of working with Microsoft 365 uh, applications in the platform. They are a five-time Microsoft Partner of the Year, and right now, you probably find in close to 10 million uh, people around this globe using AvPoint solutions. So uh, with uh, without further ado, welcome, Zach. Yep. Thank you, Eric. Great, great to be on with you today. Um, but yeah, so for a quick introduction, you know, I've been in the IT um, SaaS operations space for about four years now. So I've really seen a lot of the challenges that have come with this shift into you know, the SaaS world. Um, so very excited to be with AppPoint. Um, as you mentioned, you know, helping people collaborate more securely, more effectively within Microsoft 365. And we do it in a lot of different ways. So, you know, happy to, to have this conversation today. Yeah, uh, we're going to get into, uh, we're going to start with one of my favorites, which is the fly migration. Um, First, uh, for those viewers out there, those playing along at home that aren't aware of what a SaaS is, it's software as a service. Uh, not everyone yeah. speaks the lingo. Um, I also want to say that around here at the Pulse, we uh, we don't just talk the talk, we walk the walk, and we actually use AvPoint solutions as a managed service provider. Let's start with uh, fly migration. So a migration, everyone knows that migration is basically people or animals moving from one place to another, but how does that translate to the technology world? Right, yeah, migration is IT's favorite word, favorite project from, from what I've talked to, I'm just kidding. But yeah, so in, in this terms, it's migrating users, data, mailboxes, um, you know, we, we work a lot with people who are on-prem moving to the cloud, um, a bunch of other situations we can get into later, but really just taking the data and, and moving it into, you know, whether it's Microsoft 365 or a new system um, and doing it in a seamless way where your users are still, you know, not as effective, able to collaborate, you know, securely and efficiently um, post migration. And why would anyone want to move a bunch of data? What's what, yeah. what, what are the reasons behind that? So, I mean, one of the reasons, you know, there's a lot of benefits from being in the cloud. Um, collaboration is a lot more efficient between your users. They can collaborate in real time on different documents and projects. Um, but, and then recently, of course, the pandemic has accelerated a lot of companies to really have no choice but to migrate into the cloud so um, they can continue their, their work there. Um, beyond that though, very recently, we're seeing a lot of migrations that have to do with new, new compliance regulations. So CMMC compliance to be specific. Um, a lot of customers that we work with have to be in a GCC high Microsoft tenant. So they're coming to us to help migrate their commercial tenant into you know, their GCC high tenant to, to meet those new CMMC, or not new, but CMMC requirements. Um, beyond that, there's mergers and acquisitions, which we're seeing a lot of, especially in specific industries, um, you know, healthcare, energy, um, some of those, th there's a lot of mergers and acquisitions going on. And, you know, usually that's a pretty daunting task for IT, but they come to us and, and other solutions to help um, with those processes. But yeah, I would say those are really the, the main reasons that, that people are looking to migrate data these days. And and when you uh, go through the migration process, is there um, is there anything else that can be done? Like for example, can you like when you move? Let's say. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times people will unload a bunch of stuff. They'll be like, oh, I don't need this. Oh, I need that. Oh, I need this. Is that something you can do while you're migrating as well? 
Yeah, um, that that is is more of the pre planning phase of the migration project. Um, you know, I can speak towards AppPoint solution. So our fly migration solution does have a discovery portion where we can run some reports around your usage um, and to give you an idea because you know you don't want to migrate everything if you don't have to. In fact, migrations can be a pretty good opportunity to do some cleanup, um, you know, restructure some things if needed. So the discovery portion and, and getting the reports and, and finding out what you need to migrate, what you don't need to migrate. If there's any restructuring that can make your lives easier you know, during the process, um, this could be a good time to do it as well. Going back to the moving reference, you know, mm -hmm. hey, right. you know, there are a lot of moving companies out there. I'm sure there are other companies out there that do what AppPoint does. So why would I go to AppPoint? What what makes you guys so special when it comes right. to migration? And you mentioned the, the discovery process. So mm -hmm. I'm sure you take a little more time to plan out your move. You don't just grab the data and move right. it, right? You work with with the uh, clients and and figure out what needs to be moved, what should be moved, or right, right. Yeah. So I mean, one of the reasons that that's really you know kind of stands us apart and you mentioned it in the beginning is is our partnership with microsoft so we are five time microsoft partners of the year um you know they have a regional director program i'm not sure if if you're familiar with that but just some of the most you know uh, knowledgeable and helpful people that relate to microsoft to get this regional director title so microsoft has about a little under 200 regional directors avpoint itself has three so we have three of those under 200. Um, beyond that, so we do have a lot of expertise in advisory services. So during the pandemic, a lot of companies were rushing into Teams, um, Microsoft Teams, not, not knowing that there are a bunch of challenges and unforeseen things that can happen. So the advisory portion, we can help you know walk you through it, help do some of the discovery, the pre-planning that you need, um, and you know really help you out there. And then beyond that, our fly migration tool, um, we can do really, I want to say almost anything that migrates into Microsoft 365 and anything meaning cloud systems. So one platform to be able to migrate, you know, your, your whole Microsoft 365 tenant, your mail, all the users, their OneDrives, their teams, whatever it is in Microsoft 365, we got you covered. And then beyond that, we help migrate from Gmail, Google Drive, um, so the Google Workspace place all within the same tool, as well as Slack, Dropbox, Box. So helping organizations consolidate their, their cloud systems, um, reduce some of their spend there, um, you know, really sets us apart as being that one platform that you can use to migrate for, for all your migration needs. Doesn't Microsoft just offer this kind of stuff? Isn't this something that they have or Microsoft does offer some migration tools, I, I think, but um, you know, from talking with customers, it's it's really never enough. Um, a lot of our, a lot of the customers we work with, also, they don't have the biggest IT teams. They don't have you know fifty people that they can dedicate towards researching and building scripts and and running migrations. Um, so the advisory portion, along with maybe some limited bandwidth. Right. Um, you know, having having a third party tool, whether it's AppPoint or someone else, it really is valuable with these migrations because migrations are never really that straightforward. It, it, yeah. it can get pretty it's, tricky in there. It's not just flying south with that. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Third. Um, and again, I will say as a managed service provider, we use AppPoint for our clients and it, it is super cool and efficient. Um, and a lot of people don't realize, you know, they think Microsoft, oh, which, you know, right. operating system applications, you know, they, they, they set the standard, right? Mm -hmm. um, but they do have some limitations and it's when you open it up and take it out of the box, it looks shiny and new, but they're, it's not perfect. And um, at point, I think it's your point, you're not a competitor of Microsoft. No. Right. No, you, you're a complement Microsoft, so to speak, exactly. right? You just make it better. Yeah, and, and yeah, and like we mentioned, we have a strong partnership with Microsoft. They really like us because we're we're helping, you know, increase their storage consumption. We're helping move users into Microsoft 365 off of maybe some other platforms or off their, their on-prem instances into the cloud and drive that Teams consumption and Azure cloud consumption that they're they're very focused on, you know, on their end.
Okay, so let's say I'm planning to migrate. We're going to move all of our data, right? Do I have to then shut down for business? Is this something that can happen during, you know, regular business or do I need to take a week off? Right. No, that's a good question. So, um, you know, ideally, this is something that can be done, you know, it there should be like some sort of cutover period where your end users aren't really affected at all. So using the fly tool, this is something you can do. Um, you can schedule migrations. So we see most of our customers perform these migrations in, in off business hours. So maybe they start, you know, Friday at 5 p.m. or 6 p.m. and then, you know, do the migration during the weekend and hope to have it all completed and, and up and running um, on Monday. Um, but that said, you know, we do have abilities to have some sort of cut over, cut over period where both instances are running at the same time. Your users are still able to access everything as normal. And then once the migration is complete, you can, you know, nudge them over and then get rid of that cut over period at the end. And what about uh, migration as a service? Uh, right, yeah. Could you go into that a little bit? Yeah, so um, we offer a wide range of advisory services, really just overall Microsoft expertise, whether it is migration or Teams usage or adoption, you know, whatever it is. Um, but on the migration specifically, so we do offer migration as a service where it's it's a white glove, you know, situation. We'll come in, we'll perform the entire migration for you. Um, Typically, you know, like I mentioned, there there are small small IT teams. They don't have the bandwidth. They can't do the the migration, the planning. They don't have the expertise. So we can come in and help you on that front and perform the entire migration. Um, beyond that, we do have sort of a middle ground where we'll you know more than just helping set up the solution and install it. Um, we will help you know provide just handholding along the way and maybe somewhere in the middle between a full migration as a service and you doing it on your own where we can come in, provide some advisory, make sure everything's running smoothly and sort of hold your hand through the process. So we've migrated all of our data. It's no, well, uh, all up there in the cloud, wherever that is next to <laughs> heaven. Uh, then now what? Now, what, 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 is there anything I need to worry about? It's in the cloud, right? It's safe. Um, I, don't, I don't have to worry about anything, right? Just put the keys in the drawer and forget about it. No, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we wish it was that easy. Yeah. But no, um, you know, in fact, I think when when most IT teams migrate to the cloud, especially for the first time, I mean, if they're on prem and they're going to the cloud, they actually have more concerns about what's happening with their data, who's accessing what, where does it live? You know, trying not to make a mess in the environment um, is, is really top of mind. So, you know, that's that's also where where AppPoint comes in. So we're really meant to be a partner on your whole cloud journey. So the first step is usually migrating, migrating into the cloud, um, and then once you're there, there is a lot of concerns around, you know, for example, backing up that data, making sure it's backed up properly, and you have proper ways to restore things if a user accidentally deletes something, or um, you know something's changed, or there's malicious intent, or maybe a ransomware attack. Um, since it's it's very different than than when you're on prem, you know you kind of have that data. You know it's in your server room. You know it's secure in the cloud. It could be a little more tricky, but there's actually um, some good solutions, and it you know it, that that you can really eliminate that risk. So one way of doing that is is making sure that your data is backed up properly, and, and that's one of you know really AppPoint's strong suit. Um, that's it's where we started 21 years ago, backing up SharePoint on prem. You know, and that's how we built our relationship with Microsoft. And then as they've built out their solutions, we've been able to scale alongside them. So um, backing up Teams, backing up SharePoint Online, Exchange Online, um, OneDrive, making sure that that all that stuff's securely backed up and you can you know, restore it if needed is usually the, the top concern with IT people once they move into the cloud. Right, this is one of the cool things I love about AvPoint. Like, again, Microsoft, what, what's Microsoft's retention period? I believe it, it depends on the workload, but at most, I believe like 90 days. Okay. So and what what what's app point? What can you guys? Yeah, we can go up to unlimited. So um, yeah, up to okay. unlimited. And, yeah. And another thing I love. So let's say I I lost an email or or something like that, and I want that just that one email. 
Right. With Microsoft, a lot of times you can't get that granular, right? You, exactly. you, you have to restore like the whole mailbox or something mm -hmm. like that, right? Yeah. But with that point, you could literally go down to the day. I want this email. Boom. Right. There it is, right? Yeah. Exactly. You can search for it by by item at the item level, or you can go to a specific time that the backup took place and restore very granularly to, down to, like you mentioned, one email, one file, um, or you know, in other instances, you can you can obviously also restore the whole container, the whole mailbox if needed, the whole environment if if needed. Let's say that you just have data that just keeps like like again moving and living in a house and all this over years things build up that you just get stock mm -hmm. um and the same thing happens with data uh and in technology right um data sprawl right so can you uh enlighten us a little bit about uh how AppPoint can um, help with data sprawl yeah um yeah, so data sprawl is, is something that, you know, obviously kind of a buzzword these days and, and something that's popping up a lot. So, I mean, for example, what we see um, at AvPoint is, you know, once you migrate into the cloud, um, you set your users up, you give them all these great new tools like Teams and, and whatnot. Um, Microsoft's native, you know, admin capabilities, it's really like a light switch. It's either on or it's off. Um, either your users are able to create teams as much as they want. You know, there's no limit. They create 10 teams, 15 teams, and they can do it every day, or they have they don't have the ability to create teams at all. And that's what really leads to a lot of the sprawl is users just with their best intentions, just creating stuff, making teams, sending files and whatnot. Um, so we do have some some tools and ways to help monitor that and also kind of build in that dimmer switch. So, you know, you can grant users certain permissions and access to certain information or, um, you know, abilities within the platform. And, and one way we can do that is, is just the provisioning teams, for example. So when a user creates a team, having something pop up and say, who's the owner of this team? How long do you need this team? Um, you know, what is the purpose and who's involved? This way, when the time comes, let's say it's a March Madness 2022 team, you know, it, it it only needs to be really accessible for a couple of months. You don't want that there two years later. You can have that sort of automatically built in when the team is created to automatically dispose of that team after a certain time, contact the owner, et cetera. Um, so really, you know, cleaning as you go sort of process to, to prevent a lot of that sprawl. Is this like an av point box that pops up, or what is it actually incorporated into the Microsoft like Teams? Can yeah, is it built into Teams, or is it? Will people say, "See av point"? What's that? You know, right? Um, it is. It is built into the Teams platform itself, but it is an av point solution. So right. um, you know, they, they will see that, but. Um, letting your users know that this is sort of the process for creating teams. Um, it's very simple, very easy. It's, you fill out a few pieces of information. You know, the us user shouldn't really have too big of an issue with it um, from that standpoint. Yeah. Right. And again, people think, oh, Microsoft. Oh, it's perfect. So Microsoft didn't didn't necessarily think about this stuff, right? Or I guess it was not a big concern. You know, get the platform up, but then you fine tuned it. App point. You know, yes. fine tuned it, got it. Right. You know, probably what most people want. You know. Yeah, and you know, Microsoft being the, the the large organization they are and the solutions they build, a lot of those you know these companies they focus on the end user experience. They want to make sure that the end users be able to collaborate smoothly and the UI looks good, and they want to make sure that their consumption is going up. So sometimes I think you know these these admin tools and capabilities can fall to the wayside to that a little bit. Um, you know, that's not to say Microsoft isn't working on it or aware of it, but you know, we we really do fill fill those gaps that that they leave there. We'll start to wrap it up here, but like Microsoft, it's very user friendly, right? It has to be because right. you know. Uh, but Ab point, you know, people think, oh my God, technology. Oh, uh, I'm not going to be able to do this. Is it? Do you, do you guys consider yourself user friendly? What's your interface like? Yeah. Right. No, exactly. That's a really good question. Um, so, you know, me, I'm 
in sales. I've been, like I said, in the IT space, in the software space for a while. Um, but so I'm not, I'm not technical by any means, but I'm able to, you know, use our platforms. Um, we have a lot of different solutions. Some are way more complex than others, but in terms of migration, very simple. I think I could even perform a migration, maybe with some help on the discovery, the pre-planning. Um, but yeah, the, the tools, it's it's also what, what stands us apart is the ease of use of our migration. Backup is super simple, um, sort of a set it and forget it approach until you need to restore something or, or you know something happens, which hopefully never happens. But you know, if it does, then then yeah, and the restore uh, process is also just very easy, very user friendly. Yeah. I'm gonna have to agree with you on that. I, I'm I'm a tech, I'm not a tech, I'm a geek when it comes to technology, I love it. Uh, I'm not the best at it, but it's at point is very simple to use. Uh, it's, it's, a great, um, it's a great solution. You guys are awesome. Um, hey, around Pulse One, we like to say that we, we only do business with friends. You know, we're not transactional. So, and I got to tell you, AppPoint does the same way. Zach and I met. I, I was at the yeah. AppPoint uh, headquarters in Jersey City just after the New Year, and uh, really cool people, like friend people, like you could hang out after. You, you know, it's uh, so just exactly. kudos to you, not just to the platform, but to the company and your culture. And uh, so, it's yeah. much appreciated. Bye. Likewise, right back to you and Pulse One, Eric. It was you know great meeting you that that time, which I think is is really what led to us agreeing to this conversation. So right. always happy to work with good people who you know yeah. who have everyone's best interests in, in mind. So. Kumbaya, <laughs> kumbaya. Yeah, feel the love, everyone. All right, yeah, that was a great way to end it. Uh, Zach, um, thanks so much on this yeah. rainy Thursday. Um, right. All the best to you, my friend, and we'll talk soon. Yeah, likewise, Eric. Thanks for having me on. Sure.